Hey, what's up? Ken from Palm Beach Dino. I know you guys have missed us. We've been super busy at the shop and we've been working on overkill here. We've got a huge update in this video. We've got it on the dyno up high boost. We ran into some issues and we'll go over that later. I also wanted to talk to you guys real quick about our Godzilla truck. Everybody's been waiting for content on that and Whipple finally came through and sent us our new three liter blower. We're gonna get it on the dyno very soon. So keep an eye out for that. We've also got our Godzilla swap uh, stick project going on. We've also got project quicksand that's just been sitting in the corner. We're gonna get back on that. That's our 93 octane GT500 package. But anyway, back to overkill. We recently got it on the dyno. So first, let's go ahead and show the initial dyno pulls, what kind of power it made, and then we're gonna discuss the challenges that come with trying to make huge power on a stock transmission and clutch with a GT500. As you guys know, we tuned one of the very first twin turbo GT500s here. Rob's tuned at least two or four or more. Uh, so this is based off of what he's learned since then and uh, makes it pretty easy for us. So I'm gonna look over the data log and we'll probably go ahead and throw more boost at it right away. to make 300 more horsepower. Um, what I did was I put five PSI on top of the gate with the uh, regulator. We saw another seven pounds of boost. So I had a very low 17 uh, PSI. We're making 11.73 and 8.34 torque. And I just ran it right into the rev limiter, not on purpose. Uh, and it did not stop pulling at all. I mean, this is still not like, the right way to do it. When I came back, it was at like three to four on this gauge. So 
And we added another four PSI, roughly. So it should be like 22 pounds, 21 pounds. You know things are crazy when you make 1291 on a break-in pull and you're feeling a little unfulfilled at that moment, but that's awesome power. Now, the reason we stopped is because we were running out of fuel at the high end. A lot of people are wondering, well, how are you running out of fuel at 1291 horsepower? This car had a prototype fuel system in it that's been working out great with the blower and it had two stock fuel pumps in it. That's right, it did not have three aftermarket pumps. Two stock pumps and one helper pump and that was the end of it. So. Next up, Jeremy went and upgraded all the uh, fuel pumps in this thing, and then we threw it back on the dyno, and we're gonna go ahead and wash that now. All was not roses, though. We ran into more issues, and every step of the way, that's what happens with these large builds on new vehicles, and that is why we do this for you guys. We did the stock blower, we did the Whipple, now we're doing twin turbo, built motor. This stuff is not just easy peasy, uh, you know, you get out a directions that are 10 long, you go through them and then you make 2000 horsepower. We are learning, we've got the clutch, we've got the transmission, uh, all sorts of tuning now. We've taken the blower off, some of the sensors have changed. So much to go with this, but it still ran awesome. So let's go ahead and watch the newest pulls at higher boost. Unfortunately, I'm having problems with the data logger. It's freezing up at about 5,000 RPM. But when you look at the dynograph, at the high RPM, it gets really rough. I don't have a data log, so I don't know why, but I'm pretty sure, uh, based on what the fuel was saying, right as the data log was shutting off, that it's just overly rich. Uh, but the guys are checking the plugs right now, gapping them down anyway, and making a few more changes to the tune, and we're gonna try again. Why did you hit 
know them at all. I know, that's awesome. That's what freaks me out. They didn't look at sure. Well, this thing started out real smooth, but as you can see, we ran into some major issues there, and I was chasing my tail really badly. And that's because the car was running so well in the beginning that I thought that whatever problem we were having was um, you know, tune-related or something that I didn't really, wasn't on my radar, uh, but I certainly didn't think it was a mechanical problem with the car. But guess what? That's what turned out to be the issue. Now, what was it? The most important thing on any build is grounds. Now, in this case, we've done a lot of work on this vehicle, a lot of work on the harness, uh, things have moved around. Uh, it's, the car has been a little bit uh, abused, I'd say. So what happened was the major ground wire in the harness had a uh, break in it. So it was connected, but as things heated up, we lost grounding and that made ignition and everything go to crap. Uh, and we also lost uh, some fuel pump um, headroom. That may have been what happened in the first place. Uh, as I said earlier, we ran out of fuel pump at 1,291 horsepower, but I was expecting that system to make over 1,300 as it did on the blower. So there's a very good chance that we were fighting a grounding issue back then, and then it got worse. So after we fix that problem up, let's go ahead and check out what it made after that. guys fixed it. Shit happens when you put a car together new and shit happened. But it's fucking mint now. 21 pounds, 1320. That's a pretty cool number. And uh, the ramp is good. 900 torque, which is exactly what I was targeting. It's all coming together. So I guess so now we'll just uh, look at the log and go up and uh, boost. Change of plans. This is a really good opportunity for you guys to uh, look into the thought process of somebody who's been doing this 20 years. And I almost made a big mistake by going to the hub dyno. So we canceled that. It is back on our dyno and we're gonna make a pull. But let me explain. So, you know, when we first got the car done, all we wanted to do was break it in. There was no catch can on it, the fuel system, we're redoing everything under the hood. We threw it on the dyno. I don't mind open breathers. I wanna see how the engine's doing new. Then we put it back on the dyno. Up the boost, 1,400 horsepower, still no catch can. It kind of escaped my thought process. Um, the other thing on my mind is the copper head gaskets. When you run top fuel hoops, which we're running on this so we can run 40 plus PSI, you're really supposed to retorque them after a few heat cycles. 
Neither of those were done. I had I came in yesterday morning getting ready for the dyno. We had no catch can. We hadn't really thought about retorquing the heads because everything was going so great and we're riding this high. Let's go make 16, 1700 horsepower. But then I thought to myself, this is exactly when projects take a left turn and you really mess everything up. So, you know, if you look under the hood, there's really nothing done. So for now, we just threw some hoses on the valve covers. You know, the fuel pressure regulator is not even mounted. So we're gonna go ahead and do a couple dyno pulls. What we did change to keep it from spinning is we put some drag radials on the rear. Now, there's other ways to address this. You may have seen people uh, put glue or you know spray glue on the tires. Honestly, I mean, that will work, but I don't wanna do it. It makes a mess. I don't want it to get all over the car, so we're gonna try some drag radials, which overall should lower the power, but if we're not spinning, I'm hoping for a net higher. So I was estimating before with the spin, it was making like maybe 1460. So I'd really like to be, you know, 1440 or higher on these tires. We're gonna give it two shots. At that point, the tires will be real hot. And if we don't get there, we don't get there. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and tear down the motor, retorque the head gaskets, uh, do all new fuel lines, and get this thing 100% ready to go. We're gonna take it out on the street for you guys to check it out, and then we'll take it to the hub dyno and see what it does. Anyway, let's do some pulls and see what it makes. Another teaching moment. Don't assume the first problem is always your problem. I had some thoughts about this when I was in bed uh, the last couple nights about this, thinking it possibly was the clutch, and I was right. The clutch is slipping uh, hardcore up top, and that is why uh, we made it worse, because obviously now the tires are sticking more, which puts more load on the clutch. So we're gonna have to regroup and see what we can do. So 1408 is all we've got for this one. Hope you guys like the video. Make sure you subscribe because we got a lot more with this car and we'll see you on the next one.